know, so getting the energy is easy. You just go outside and collect all the water you want. So the fuel is no longer our concern. You know, it's coming up with the electricity to turn this into a gas. You know, you gotta be able to turn this into a gas. That's the secret. So I'm gonna use the pure hydrogen generator today. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the bubbler and hook all this up. Doc, you gotta get out of here. Come on, buddy. You gotta move. I can't do this with you up here. And we're gonna generate some DC square wave. Got my voltage meter hooked up to the generator right there. You can see it in the back. So we're gonna run this vacuum engine. Have my hose hooked up to the wand here. Very simple setup today, so let's go ahead and run this thing. Doc, you're gonna have to get off the table. Come on, get up. Give you guys a good look at the motor. You can see my generator on the back here. Let's go ahead and turn all this on. I'll show you what she will do. All right, this thing loves hydrogen gas because it burns so hot, it gobbles it up with ease. I can't wait till the larger one gets here. And this thing comes apart so easy. I'm gonna take it apart and show you guys. It's so simple. There's nothing to it. This thing is a beast, man. So I've chose to go with this engine. I'm gonna have this thing enlarged because it's so simple. It's easy for me to oil and take care of and the parts are easy to copy. I'm gonna go with this thing. So I'm gonna try a couple of different ones. Let me show you how this thing runs here. Go on Wikipedia right there and look at the vacuum engine. Just give you a little bit of an idea how this thing rolls. Check it out. It goes just like this. So this thing is wicked, dude. It's a beast. It puts out enormous amounts of electricity. It's unbelievable this thing isn't available everywhere at a larger size. Look at that thing rock, dude. So that's for you new guys that's never seen one of these. That's how it operates. It's very simple stuff, man. So we need these motors to generate electrical power. That's what they were designed for. It's too bad they've nerfed them down into these tiny little devices. 
If you want to buy one that costs a little more money, we're going to have to build it ourselves. So what I've decided was to order a few models, the simplest ones I could find. I mean, Stanley Myers would always say, keep it simple, stupid. Remember, we're just trying to generate electrical power. We don't need a whole lot of force. We need RPMs. So these motors are genius for that. I've already taken this apart a dozen times and it's so easy to put back together you won't believe it. So what I've decided to do is take these two models. I have a couple of different models on the way I'm going to show you guys to generate AC power and DC power. So we're going to generate sine wave and square wave. We're going to create that 21st century fire we call electricity all on our own. So we're going to get these things enlarged. What I've done was I went on eBay and I found a machine service. It's a machine shop metalworking service. And what they're going to do is reverse engineer this stuff. I'm going to send it there and have them reverse engineer it and make it larger to the size that we need. Then we produce a few hundred watts at least. So this thing's going to be a lot bigger when you see it in the future. I'm going to have it enlarged so I can run it on pure hydrogen. That's the trick, is getting these things larger. They've been nerfed by the elite and the aliens. You know, these technologies that can set you free. It's a story as old as time itself, you know? Now, if you're gonna run one of these engines, I don't advise using an oxyhydrogen flame. See, this is an oxidized flame. It can cut right through steel and damage your engine. So you have to cool that off a bit if you're gonna use that on a flame liquor engine. So it's something to think about. It's not like pure hydrogen. And it's not like pure hydrogen gas where there's no oxygen. You can use the hydrogen reduced to resistance in Stirling engines too if you run them in an atmosphere of hydrogen. But I'm going to show you right here if you put an oxyhydrogen flame up here. This is a small one just to demonstrate to you guys. Yep, that's lame. It won't do it. I don't want to put it up there and damage my motor. I just wanted to show you guys that. It's different than pure hydrogen. So if you think about it, the Stirling engine is the answer to a lot of our electricity problems. With this device, you can use almost any energy source to get this thing going and produce your electrical power. And the idea is to produce the electrical power to charge your batteries and fill all your hydrogen gas tanks. So you got to remember that. Unfortunately, this thing has been reduced to a Chinese toy, you know, a mere circus novelty. I mean, this is one of the greatest human inventions ever created, and it's been nerfed. And if you really want to buy one of these things nice, like a full-size one, unfortunately, they're very expensive. Just to get an antique one, I mean, look at the price of this thing. You have to order it for some other country. That's ridiculous. Uh, if Robert Sterling knew this, he would probably roll over in his grave. One of the greatest human inventions ever created. Sadly, it's been reduced to a Chinese circus sideshow attraction. I mean, this was a showpiece of human ingenuity. Think of that. You know, it should be available at every Walmart, at every gas station. You should be able to get this and not no little toy either. It should be huge. You should be able to get you a good medium-sized one. And that's what I'm working on here. I'm trying to get one that we can all use. I'm going to take these things and reverse engineer it. I got one coming and I have a machinist friend that's going to make one that we can all build that's very simple with off the shelf parts. Alright, so there she is. That's the Sterling Engine Alpha. I'm breaking it down. It's very simple. I mean, look how easy that is, guys. There's nothing to these things. They're so simple, it's amazing. These are all the serviceable parts. There's no sense taking out the generator. See, and these are what you're going to use to make electricity. And I have even more simple ones on the way that we're going to copy and make larger. They don't have to be complicated. Remember, we're going to use these things to make pure hydrogen gas. So what's going to make all that electricity to store your tanks and fill everything up? Show you how that thing runs. Same story. This thing's a beast, man. Look at it run. That's how the Alpha works. So 
So keep that in mind how that sucker runs. So simple. Let's go to the next one and break it down. So you can see anyone can take one of these apart and put them back together. They're so simple, it's amazing. This is a magnificent piece of machinery. So these parts are easy to copy. You know, it's easy to make replacement parts for something like this. You can reverse engineer this so easy. You know, I'm no machinist, even though I have some knowledge of it. I want to show you guys some stuff here. Running these on pure hydrogen is the key. Look at my book right here. You can see they've done a lot of tests on these things. You know, NASA, look, NASA's got their hands on this stuff. If you look in this book, there's so many designs and they can run completely off sunlight. And remember, every gas engine out there has an oil refinery attached to it, not these things. They're wonderful machines. I'm trying to get you guys into this. And you can see this guy's using the waste heat from a system to power an entirely different Sterling engine. Clever. And you use these as pumps too, you know? Talk about horses to water. So back in the horses day, you know, they used these to pump water to feed the herds. Alright, I want you guys to see this part in my Sterling engine book right here, my Andy Ross Sterling engine book. So I got my Sterling here on the left and we got the flame meter here right in front of me. The rhombic drive, which I don't have here, there's a crankshaft with a hypnotizing motion. It looks like this. It's probably one of the coolest Sterling engines out there. What I wanted to show you guys is so you could go back and read it. It tells you about how when they started adding hydrogen and helium to these engines, let me film it so you can see it. They became very efficient. Okay? These engines, you know, it wasn't widely published back in the times. So it shows you right there, General Motors, you know, although it was not widely publicized, General Motors contributed greatly to the Sterling engine. So you can run these things in an atmosphere under pressure. It's a very intelligent design. That way there's no friction. And they can run completely off sunlight too. A lot of people don't know that. Completely solar power from the sun and turn it directly into mechanical energy. So I hope that helps a little bit to refer to these. I just wanted to show you some of that. It's important, it's very important that you guys understand a little bit about these motors. I'm gonna take this one apart real quick and show you this one too. Just great stuff. And if you look on the back of this book here, I couldn't say it better myself. The key to the future more and more frequently is found in the past. And it says reflecting man recalls on earlier ideas and modifies to improve upon them. You know, that's in Andy Ross's own words right there. You know, back in the day, this is cheap to get a book like this. It's hard to find now, nowadays.